Tamitha was already high in the air by the time she realized a dragon had snatched her. She'd been moseying along the road, making up a poem about pasta in her head, when the creature swooped down from the clouds, all bulging red muscles and sharp scales. The dragon flapped his enormous bat wings, wrapped his bronze claws around her, and took off into the sky before Tamitha could think of a word that rhymed with linguini. Thousands of feet below her, vast forests glided by, looking like so many heads of broccoli. At last, a stone tower came into view. The dragon descended, flew through a window on the tower's east side, and dropped Tamitha in a clear space on the stone flo floor. The rest of the floor and most of every other available surface was covered in junk. Staggering towers of grease speckled pots, dozens of used up watercolor palettes, hopelessly tangled yo yo's and paddle balls, and about a thousand of those aluminum tabs from the tops of soft drink. All right, girl, the dragon said. You are my prisoner, and if you don't want to face my wrath, you must clean my castle. Tamitha brushed off her knees. Is that why you snatched me out of the street? Because your house is messy? He wouldn't have put it that way himself, but the dragon conceded. This was more or less so. Couldn't you just have advertised for a housekeeper? said Tamitha. Now that she mentioned it, it seemed so obviously like the sensible thing to do that the dragon was embarrassed. To cover up his embarrassment, he shouted, Silence, minion! You can start with the dishes! He launched through the window and flew out of sight. Actually, Tamitha didn't mind doing the dishes, provided she could sing while she did them. And she might have complied if the dragon had asked nicely and offered to dry. Under the circumstances, she looked about for the exit instead. A quick look around the room revealed three doors off to Tamitha's right. Tamitha assumed they were locked, but she decided to try the knobs anyway. She was very much surprised when the first door swung open without so much as a creak. Inside the first room, a girl with green skin and tomato-colored hair stood on a short ledge. The girl had eight arms and eight eyes, like a spider. Beyond the ledge, a pool of swirling water stretched to a back wall with a red door. Fins sliced ominously through the waves. A mouse sat on a platform in the middle of the pool. Both the girl and the mouse looked extremely depressed. Sorry, said Tamitha. I was just looking for the exit. It's there, said the spider girl, pointing to the red door. But you'll never reach it. The moat is full of ravenous sharks, venomous sea snakes, and squids who haven't had naps all day. So I see. My mouse has been trapped on that platform for quite some time, ever since she rode out to it, and Moray Eel ate her canoe. I don't know how to get her back. If you think of a way around our problem, I hope you will let us know. Tamitha said she would, then continued to the second door. A blast of heat rolled over her skin. The floor of this room was covered in flaming coals. Two small people in leather vests and flat caps perched on beams near the ceiling. Who are you? asked Tamitha. We're brownies, said the brownie in the green vest. Like the baked good, said Tamitha. Clearly not like the baked good. Don't you have eyes? 
said the other brownie. We're magical craftsmen, not chocolatey treats. I'm sorry if I offended you. The first brownie sighed. You'll have to forgive my friend. He's a little grouchy because we've been stuck in this boiling hot room for hours. How terribly inconvenient, said Tamitha. I'm sure I'd be grouchy too. In that case, I can I imagine you can't tell me the way out of this castle. The blue door over there is an exit, said the grouchy brownie. But unless you can walk on hot coals, you can't make it. If you think of a way, let us know what it is, the green-vested brownie said. We'll do the same for you. Tamitha agreed, thanked them, and continued to the third room. The third room was a broom closet. A set of lacrosse sticks leaned against one wall. Otherwise, there was nothing but mops, brooms, and buckets. Tamitha turned to the pile of junk collected in the tower. An old wind-up phonograph, a wiffle bar, a wiffle ball, a toy bow and arrow, a garden hose. She picked up the hose and sliced off the nozzle with a pair of scissors. Then she reopened the first two doors and stuck one end of the cut hose in the pool. She started sucking on the other end with her mouth. What are you doing? said the spider girl. That doesn't seem sanitary, the grouchy brownie added. When Tamitha pulled her mouth away, water flowed from the hose. She set the hose down so that the water poured over the coals on the floor of the second room. It's called a siphon, she said. The water level in the pool sank lower, and a chain connecting the platform to the ledge appeared. The mouse scurried across the chain, too high up for the sharks and sea snakes to reach. The spider girl clapped eight hands for joy. In no time at all, the water from the siphon had put out all the coals in the second room, and the brownies climbed down from their perches. Tamitha was able to cross safely to the blue door, down a flight of stairs, and out the green castle gate. The dragon found Tamitha on the road the next morning. What are you doing here? he asked. I thought I told you to languish forever in the tallest tower of my impenetrable castle until the end of your miserable days. You never told me that, said Tamitha. It was implied. The dragon scooped her up, and soon they were back in the tower, which was just as messy as before. Now when I get back, I want that floor so clean I could eat my dinner off it, which I sometimes do. He flapped away in a huff. Back again, said the formerly grouchy brownie. He and the others, the green-vested brownie, the spider girl, and the mouse were playing a game of cards by the sink. I'm afraid I don't have much of a choice, said Tamitha. She went to the second door, but as she expected, the dragon had locked it, so she would not escape through it again. That left the first door, the one with the impassable moat. Tamitha frowned thoughtfully at the choppy waves. She turned to the spider girl. Forgive me for asking a personal question, said Tamitha, but can you make a spider web? In answer, the girl oozed silk from her fingers and wove the strands into an impressive cat's cradle. It's five times the strength of steel, she humble bragged. Tamitha expressed her admiration, and you, she said, turning to the brownies, are skilled in design and woodwork, I imagine. We can carve wood, cut stone, smelt metal, and bake a mean souffle, said the green-vested brownie. The formerly grouchy brownie shuffled the cards in an especially fancy manner for emphasis. Tamitha gave them an idea of what she was imagining. Immediately, they all set to work. The spider girl formed a strong cable from her web strands, and the brownies made, her, made a handlebar from an old pipe, some rubber bands, parts of the toy bow, and a well-placed paperclip. Dragging one end of the cable with her, 
The mouse scurried across the chain to the platform, which had drifted to the other side of the pool. She looped the cable through a hook above the door frame, while Tamatha hooked the other end to the ceiling over the ledge. When both ends were secure, Tamatha grasped the handlebar and ziplined over the moat. You should not try this at home. She landed on the other side, waved to her friends, and continued through the red door and out of the castle. Just as before, the dragon caught up with her. If I go to all the trouble of imprisoning you, he said, seizing her in his claws, the least you could do is stay imprisoned. Again they flew back to the tower, and again he instructed her to clean his mess. Then he flapped off into the distance. I'm afraid the dragon locked both doors this time, the spider girl said. The third door is still open, but it's only a broom closet. That didn't seem promising, but Tamatha opened the third door anyway just in case. She took out the brooms and mops and the cross sticks. For a while they brainstormed ideas, but then the mouse, who had climbed up a bookcase to be closer to the conversation, accidentally knocked the wiffle ball from the shelf to the ground. The green-vested brownie, out of pure boredom, knocked it across the floor with a broom. The spider girl took a mop and knocked it back. Right away, they forgot about escaping and instead invented a game. They positioned two empty buckets at either end of the room. Those were the goals. The object of the game was to knock the wiffle ball into your opponent's bucket with the broom. The mouse played some conga music on the phonograph. When she stopped the music, they were all to run and tag the left wall. Whoever was the last to get there had to crank the phonograph until the next point was scored. They had been playing this game for nearly an hour when the dragon came home. What are you doing? he yelled. But them, none of them heard him. The formerly grouchy brownie had just stopped the phonograph, and all of them shrieked and ran to the wall. Stop, or I'll burn you all to cinders, said the dragon, though he knew perfectly well he would do nothing of the kind, not when they were carrying his favorite lacrosse sticks. In any case, they weren't listening. They had just incorporated a new element into the game that involved clacking the lacrosse sticks together like swords, an activity which is always dangerous and nerve-wracking for onlookers, but great fun for participants. Stop clacking those lacrosse sticks, said the dragon. It's very nerve-wracking and seems dangerous. They were too busy laughing to pay him any mind. Tamatha batted the wiffle ball through the green-vested brownie's legs and into the bucket for three more points. The mouse stopped the phonograph and the girls and brownies rushed to tag the wall. Stop! The dragon roared, and he snatched the broom out of Tamatha's hands. This is madness, and that's not how you use a broom. It isn't, Tamatha winked at her friends. How do you use a broom? Like this. The dragon carefully swept the floor, clearing his junk out of the way as he went. After he'd stowed away all his belongings and emptied the dustpan into the trash, he held out the broom to Tamatha. For the last time, do as I say and clean my tower. Tamatha shrugs. The tower's already clean. The dragon opened his ma mouth, but absolutely nothing came out. His stomach dropped. He stared at the broom and dustpan in his hands, not entirely sure how they'd gotten there. Are you still using that broom? said Tamatha. The dragon shook his head, too stunned to speak. Tamatha took the broom from him. Would you mind unlocking the door? she asked. He wordlessly handed her the keys. Tamatha and her friends engaged in a line out the tower door and down the stairs. All afternoon they played their new game in the sunshine.